Let me thank Biogaia for kindly inviting me to this wonderful meeting uh, with uh, this wonderful audience today to speak about the possibility that we have to control H. pylori infection by the use of probiotic. As you know, uh, H. pylori infection is uh, worldwide diffused and with peak of incidence of 80% in developing countries. And this uh, bacterium invariably leads to chronic gastritis and peptic ulcer disease and is an essential risk factor for gastric cancer. And today, uh, if you want to get rid of this bacterium, you should use triple therapy because it's a first-line choice of treatment. However, the cure rate is about 75%. If we get all our patients with H. pylori, you will see that less than 10% are at high risk and they deserve the best eradication option, being triple therapy or the novel sequential treatment. However, the vast majority of patients will be dyspeptic, and whether to treat or not to treat still remains a physician's choice, so, and depends on where do they live, the rate of infection in the area where the patient lives, and depends on symptoms. So you may go for antibiotic, you may choose to give to this patient proton pumps inhibitors, or perhaps you may go for a probiotic. And then you have another class of patients that's quite wide. Those are asymptomatic. They may know to have the infection because they have a member in the family who has H. pylori, the test, and they are uh, positive, but actually they have no symptoms, and they do not deserve infection um, treatment. However, we need to know that these two groups of patients are interchangeable. Since some dyspeptic patient may become asymptomatic, and some asymptomatic may become dyspeptic. We need to think that eradicated regimens have some disadvantages of being expensive, risking poor compliance, and causing side, of, side effects. And even more important is that you can have the emergence of resistance strains that in the future will become a big issue because it will become even more difficult to eradicate the bacterium. So in this perspective, there is a considerable interest in developing a low-cost, large-scale alternative solutions to prevent or at least to control H. pylori infection. And probiotics may actually close this gap. Now, probiotics are harmless. They are easy to administer, do not have side effects, do not confer resistance to antibiotics. And so they are a good choice. However, not just because they have these advantages, we should deliberately give these to patients infected with H. pylori without proving that they are efficacious. And first of all, we need to prove that there is a mechanism of action of probiotics against H. pylori. And actually, reviewing data in the literature show that there are many ways of a probiotic to fight against H. pylori. And we have non-immunological and immunological mechanism of action. First of all, non-immunological, those uh, uh, several strains of probiotics are able to, produ uh, to produce uh, antimicrobial substances that uh, actually uh, have an anti-H. pylori activity, such as reuteran with the Lactobacillus reuteri. And also, so most of the probiotic product uh, end products of lactobacillus fermentation that actually have a direct uh, inhibitory effect on H. pylori and on urease activity. Moreover, as you know, H. pylori inhibits the production of gastric mucus, and uh, this reduced production of gastric mucus enhance adhesion of H. pylori to gastric epithelial cells. Now, a probiotic can be able to restore the production of mucus. When we go through the immunological mechanism of action of a probiotic against H. pylori, we know that the probiotic are able to modify the immune response of the host. By using a probiotic, you should use a probiotic with a proven activity because the fact is strain-specific. Now, we were, we were interested in, in, uh, in assessing uh, an anti-H. pylori property of a probiotic in southern Italy because in our uh, region, the, the H. pylori is uh, uh, quite diffuse. And the reason why we choose uh, uh, Lactobacillus reuteri was for several reasons. First of all, reuteri is widely used as, as food additive. And it has been high demonstrated that the administration is safe and uh, the administration reduces gastrointestinal infection. 
being acid resistant, this probiotic persists in the storm much longer than other bacteria and survive in high quantities. Moreover, it has been also shown that reuteri adheres to gastric epithelial cells from both corpus and antral gastric biopsies, and it has also been shown in vitro that this probiotic have an anti-H pylori effect, inhibitor effect on the plate. So what we did next was to plan this randomized control study where 40 H. pylori infected adults naive to previous treatment against H. pylori were blindly randomized to receive either reuteri or placebo, and they had been treated for four weeks. Both at entry, at the end of the administration, we evaluated by an indirect measure the bacterial load since we did both ure bread test and stool antigen determination. And both at entry and at the end of the trial, the patient fill in a questionnaire validated to score their symptoms. As you can see, here you have the urea bread test and here H. pylori stool antigen. As you can see, patients who were receiving reuteri have a significant reduction of those two markers of bacterial load. Does and this was not happening in those who were receiving placebo, showing that this probiotic have actually an effect against this H. pylori. We were even more surprised when we looked at the data on symptoms, since the gastrointestinal symptom rate scale showed that the patients who were receiving reuteri feel significantly better after the administration as compared to those who were receiving placebo, where the reduction in symptoms were not significant. And so, this is very interesting for future development, because the probiotic that may be able to prevent addition may be used as anti-addition drugs, and may have actually a role in the future, even in prevention, because we are really interested in how we can prevent infection. Indeed, we have recently shown and published in Juno Pediatric Centrology Nutrition that if you take all your children that have been successfully eradicated and you retest these children after two years, at least in our geographic area, you have 30% chance of, having, of being reinfected. So having a strain, a probiotic strain with anti adhesive properties to be administered to these high-risk patients may significantly reduce the chance of getting a reinfection, and we are working on this um, prevention trial. Now, we wanted actually to see whether this action was also uh, true for children. That's why we planned a randomized trial that we published in 2006, where 40 H. pylori infected children receiving sequential treatment for H. pylori, were randomized to receive either reuteri or placebo. The supplementation was given during the sequential regime of 10 days and during 10 days of follow-up. And then we did the evaluation of symptoms by a validated questionnaire before eradicating, at the end of the eradication therapy, and at the end of follow-up. Two months after finishing therapy, we did the urea breath test to confirm eradication. And those are our results. As you can see, at the end, before starting therapy, patients receiving placebo or reuteri have similar complaints. However, at the end of treatment, those who were receiving reuteri feel less symptoms as compared to those who were receiving placebo. And this difference was still maintained at the end of follow-up. When we went analyzing each individual symptoms, we saw you, uh, patients have less abdominal distension, less diarrhea, less also uh, eructation. And we were impressed that during treatment, patients were feeling also less epigastric pain, that we have thought it was due to a more rapid decrease of bacterial load when we have added the probiotic. Adding a probiotic gave also a higher, although no significant, increase of eradication uh, rates in these infants. So we are convinced that giving a probiotic is uh, always a good uh, way to prevent antibiotic and perhaps to increase eradication rates, and giving alone also is a good idea to keep uh, low 
the bacterial load in the stomach of the infected patient. 